It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Bidlin live from Bar Canada. The day was happening. Not much, man. We got. We will rock you. Uh, uh, welcoming us in this morning. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. You know what you're gonna have to do tonight? You're gonna have to call me and remind me that it's not Friday today, because I did yeah, every yeah. year this happens. I, I have to. I've reminded myself multiple times yesterday that this morning is not Friday morning. Yeah. Because it feels like Friday morning because of March Madness. It does. It does. I always try to. I always try to schedule like one thing or something on Thursday of uh, this Thursday just to, to just to avoid that feeling. Yeah. Like, I got one other thing I got to do today after the show. What's that? Share with us. No, doctor's point. Oh, okay, great. Well, great scheduling on your yeah. part, by the way. Well, nicely done. Uh, by the way, if you have not filled out, if you have not submitted your bracket yet, and I know you know, you know who you are, because uh, there's still a little over two hours here before the first tip uh, between Mississippi State and Michigan State, uh, wait a half an hour, because Dr. Bob is going to join us, and he will go through uh, what the – underpicked teams are in terms of filling out your brackets. The idea, the bigger the pool, the more contrarian you ought to be. Uh, and he has access to the big uh, pool numbers, and he will try to optimize your bracket if you have not submitted it yet. One last person you got to listen to, uh, because before that, Zach Cohen will have his college basketball plays as well. Uh, we'll have crack a little later on the show, and I got to tell you what my survivor play is today. We're going to get to that momentarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, real quick, because the Dodgers now are on pace to go one and one. Just want to get this out of the way, Kelly. Uh, Dodgers lose to the Padres here. Uh, Shohei, one of five in this ball game. Uh, in case you missed it, the other big story yesterday, and we'll get into this a little uh, later perhaps. Or you know what? Maybe not, because it's March Madness. But uh, we do have to mention that uh, if you missed it, if you're trapped under heavy object yesterday, Dodgers interpreter for Shohei Otani fired. Uh, after questions surrounding at least $4.5 million in wire transfers sent from Otani's bank account to a bookmaking operation set off a series of events, Ipe Mizuhara, longtime friend and interpreter for Otani, incurred the gambling debts to a Southern California bookmaking operation that is under federal investigation that was from multiple sources, as told to ESPN, how he came to lose his job, started the reporters asking questions about the wire transfers, uh, Mizuhara had a contract with the uh, Angels when Otani played there and signed with the Dodgers this offseason. He confirmed to ESPN he's been paid between $300,000 to $500,000 annually. And the issue with this story is that, as Dallas Braden, former ball player Dallas Braden, uh, pointed out, the rough timeline, Otani went on record with ESPN stating uh, that he transferred $4.5 million himself to the bookmaker on behalf of his interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara. Then a spokesperson for Otani uh, delivered Ipe to ESPN and said, here, talk to him. Uh, and Ipe says Otani never bet and felt bad for him, Mizuhara, and paid off his debt, Mizuhara's debt, so he'd never do it again. Then the spokesperson for Otani says, wait a minute, uh, now that I've heard this uh, interview, uh, he's lying, the interpreter, after he gave his 90-minute statement to ESPN. Otani's lawyers claimed a massive theft, quote-unquote, and then Ipe then said that Otani had zero knowledge of his debt or the gambling happened in general. That about right. <laughs> so it's just there's all these, you know, just yeah. the, the stories are changing and they're evolving. and A legal mess, I'm it, sure. Yeah, it, let's just put it this way. Yeah, this doesn't sound good. Yeah, it doesn't sound Let good. Just it it doesn't way. sound good. I mean, if yeah. you, you kind of believe the – if you believe the surface story – this, it, it's kind of sad if you believe the surface story of this guy who, you know, the interpreter who you always see with Otani, who's been with him since he's gotten into the majors, who, you know, is basically a close friend, personal assistant interpreter, all combined into one. Okay, man, you got like you went and lost a ton of money, and then Shohei's going to cover four and a half billion dollars worth of your debts. So that what is, a dude. So if you believe that story, you're right. It's how could you mess up that cush gig? Yeah. And boy, you know, what a great friend Otani is to you. Right. Or if you believe the other side of this, which is, ain't none of that true. Right, exactly. And oh, what a friend Someone's he is taking to the Otani. Fall. Yeah. Oh, what a friend he is to Otani on the flip side, right, um, right. covering up for all that time. So we'll see. Um, see how that plays out. Yep. And, and, and sports betting is viewed differently now than it was back in the Pete Rose days. Mm -hmm. So it's not an equivalent. Um, and again, there's no allegation that there's baseball bets here either. So um, let's put it this way. The di big difference, and I'll end it on this. The big difference is wh while baseball did everything back then to just shun Pete Rose, you would think they would take an opposite tact here of having this go away as quickly as humanly possible. Completely agree. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, okay.
I don't know if you know this. March Madness, two hours away. Man, this is fantastic. Cool. And so I have famously said uh, I, I don't do brackets anymore. Uh, I am a Survivor guy, and I believe it is the most fun thing. NCAA Survivor, as great as NFL Survivor is, NCAA Tournament Survivor is the greatest thing ever because it's multidimensional. Not only is it, uh, you know, again, contrasted with the NFL, NFL 20-team, if you do the circle one, which has a Thanksgiving and a Christmas quirk, that's a 20-team money line parlay where you can't pick the same team twice. It's linear. One direction. Uh, this is multidimensional. It's chess because not only do you have to survive on a daily basis with one team, but you also have to make sure that you have teams remaining once we get down the stretch, Elite Eight, Final Four, and Championship game. Um, because otherwise you'll be eliminated that way. Eliminated that way. So now let me just say this. The quirk to my survivor, the survivor that I'm in, uh, maximum three entries. Maximum three entries. But here's the key. You are allowed one buy-in, one re-buy-in on each of them. So even if I get knocked out today, I'm allowed to re-buy. Um, so what does that mean? That one one time only, by the way. Everybody gets this uh, this allowance. So the question is, do I, just like with, with uh, NFL Survivor, do I pick a different team in each of my three entries? Do I go all in on one? Well, with the rebuy, I think I'm going to shove with one team. And the problem with, you know, unlike my tennis picks, which we're about to do here, um, where I'm by myself locked into my numbers and here are my picks and it's very mechanical for me. Uh, this is more like, okay, let me hear what everybody else has to say. I did a podcast with Todd and Will, a Beating the Book Megapod podcast with Todd and Will. Then I, uh, of course, we had Peter Keating and Jordan Brenner on yesterday. Um, and, you know, like taking all this information. And the issue is, or at least with all this anecdotally that I took in on this show, there's not really a consensus on any update. Oh, by the the other big rule in the contest that I need to talk about is you are the tiebreaker is upset incentivized. That's hilarious. Okay, it's, okay. Funny. it's funny you just said that because we're gonna get to my bets in a bit right. that I've made. It's not many incentivized. dogs. So you're, <laughs> so you're incentivized because in the end, if you're tied, if you're picking the 13s and the 12s and your numbers add up to to more, you'll be the winner. Um, I ended up with because there was no consensus between Todd, Will, and Jordan Brenner and Peter Keating and everybody else who we had on the show. Because for every McNeese state, right? Right, yes. There was people saying, yeah, but it's still Gonzaga. Yeah. And for every, you know, for every NC state, having come off the ACC tournament, just to use another example, you know, you had Todd and Will both saying, no, I like Texas Tech. Right. Yep. I ended up with Colorado State over Texas. Okay. And I'm shoving on Colorado Let's State go. in Let's all go. three. Because I don't think Texas is very good. I still think you're playing it right, though. I, and it's still a double-digit seed, yeah. Colorado State, albeit a 10. And so, and again, I have the rebuy. So the, the pressure is not such that it would eliminate me entirely. So I'm going all in on Colorado State today. That is my survivor play. Um, and again, I don't feel like Colorado State is going to advance deep into the One tournament. more time. It's four entries and you're three. Three and you're pushing, you're shoving all three. Shoving okay. Colorado State because I do get a re If I lose today, I'm still not eliminated. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. yeah I couldn't remember if you told me you had three or four and you were saving one and no, you're no, going three. three to Colorado State. Okay. All right. Shove. Cool. I like it. I like it. Uh, it's kind of funny you say that, though. I'm just going to go to my bets. Look, college yeah, basketball, I, I bet lightly. If you've listened to this show, you know this is not my forte. This is fun gambling action during the NCAA tournament. I'll get involved live like you will, too, but I wanted to put these in pregame. What's the one trend here on the game? Bets, Gil. Not any dogs. <laughs> Not a single. By the way, that is there because is of what you said. There is a little voice in my head. Because what have we talked about all week? Not only this show, but every show in the universe, uh, and every show on this network, every show in the sports betting universe, sports media universe talks about all the upsets, right? Right. There's been a little voice in my head all week that said, "What if this is the year where there ain't much of that?" So me too. And I, but I hope, I, and I hope we're right, Gil. But no, it, knowing that it's called March Madness and uh, that doesn't happen, <laughs> happen all the time, I'm pretty terrified of it. So real quick today, uh, I just I bet BYU laid seven and a half with them. I bet that on the opener. Uh, Drake Moneyline played that. And then Friday, I've got FAU, Baylor, Auburn, TCU. Futures, FAU horrible number bet a while ago. Tennessee and Auburn just bet yesterday. Yeah, Decided I did add those. I should mention, I do have my futures and, you know, throw them in the trash already. But I had... Uh, I had uh, BYU at 100-1 to 1 to win it all. Yes, they're in the tournament. You never know. Uh, I have Alabama to win it all. Yes, they're in the tournament. You never know. 60-1. to 1. Um, I don't expect either of those to win. To make the Final Four, I, these, these are, you know, UConn certainly live at plus 180. 
got that in February, early February, and then BYU at 12 to one to make the Final Four. Let's just put it this way: stranger things have happened. I mean, I mean well, it also, at least all your numbers are better than what they are now. Oh yes. <laughs> That for sure. I but. pulled up some of those futures yesterday. FAU is like 200 to one places. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. like, cool, I got 75 to one. Let's go. Well, FAU is a great example. We had Jim Root on yesterday, so the three-man weavers. So Jim reports to us that both of the other guys love FAU in their opener. And I'm like, Isn't that, aren't they a year late on FAU? He's like, I think so. Right? So it's like even those three guys can't get together on just the outcome of that one game, let alone some of these other. I mean, that was what, so they had. I was listening to their pod. So it's Matt. Matt. Matt is what like he was last year. Is very is heavy on FAU and thinks that they can kind of recapture what they had last year since it's a lot of the same pieces. Kai Kai went along with it, and I think they both had them upsetting then UConn. And, but remember, Jim, with Jim, we talked to yesterday. He only he had UConn beating FAU in the second round, but had then he losing, had him losing after that in the Sweet 16 to Auburn, which is right. Not nearly as controversial, yeah. Um, man, should it's going to be so much fun. Uh, we'll talk more college hoops on the other side with Zach Cohen, Dr. Bob as well. Zach with some tennis plays. I have my tennis plays at the top on the other side as well. Kelly's got some NBA plays, or at least one. All of that and more. March Madness, it's coming. Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Don't forget to get your VSIN annual subscription for $199. $199. Daily best bets, betting splits, March Mania betting guide. You got to use promo code ANG, though. Sign up today, VSIN.com slash subscribe. But that $199 subscription, only if you use promo code ANG. Promo code ANG like a numbers game. If you want to find anything that Zach Cohen writes about sports betting, you got to have that promo code. Get on the website now. Check it all out. Absolutely right. Check it out. VSIN.com slash subscribe. Gil Alexander, that's the voice of Kelly Bidlin, producer number nine, so much more than a producer. Uh, before we get to Zach, can I uh, do my tennis picks here? Um, here's the dilly. Uh, second part of the Sunshine Double, Indian Wells being the first, Miami Open being the second. Uh, yesterday, we went 2-1 and one on the show. Uh, terrible play by me on Angelique Kerber to start the day. She didn't show up against Sloan Stevens. Um, but Sloan always gets me. Like, she's that, she's the one who, like, the, she bucks the numbers and she just performs however she performs on a daily basis. But then, can, came, can I go real quick post show content yesterday? Oh, so, yeah, so I spent uh, no. a solid 10 to 12 minutes. Sorry, Zach. We'll get to you in one sec. I'm sorry. I spent a, sorry, uh, ten, uh, a solid 10 to 12 minutes watching the, the great keepers of the Sigma Derby, like, clean it and like <laughs> get it all reset That's i was right. so fascinated by it i'm like live texting gill what i'm watching yeah um i wasn't allowed to take a picture of it but i was like live i was talking to these guys it was beyond fascinating i get to my car downstairs gill's still in his car i thought he had left like 20 minutes ago <laughs> what he's in his car sweating out this tennis match <laughs> well that one wasn't much of a sweat but we came back and then and hit uh nadia Podoroska as a plus 195 uh Dog yesterday against Ashlyn Kruger. That was a straight set win, so that more than made up for that. And then Katie Volinets, although she did wobble in the second set against uh, Sophia Kennan, she got it done in three. So two and one and a, and a nice winning day yesterday. I got four today, all on the women's side. It's not like I'm not, ha I, I am handicapping the men's side. I just don't like anything. Uh, but on the women's side, I got four. And they're all slight dogs, at least when I put them in at vcin.com slash picks last night. Remember, all show hosts and guests, every sport, all the picks at vcin.com slash picks for subscribers. I got Yulia Putinseva at plus 174 over Ludmila Samsonova, who, boy, uh, she just is fade material to me so often. And I think Putinseva uh, is the player at plus 174, and her raw numbers are better than Samsonova's, quite frankly, six and three months. Uh, Dion Pari is the first one that goes is in less than an hour. Yeah, Dion Pari, how many times have we played her? Plus 137 against Beatrice Haddad, Haddad Maya, who is not in her best form. Uh, Deanna Schneider, it's pronounced Schneider, although it's spelled Schneider. 
Uh, she's a slight, I got her a slight dog. I'm checking the prices right now to see if these are still in pocket here against Maddie Keys. Maddie Keys has not been good. Uh, Schneider took down Venus Williams. Madison Keys is a slight step up, but not much of a step up these days. Uh, Schneider should not be a dog or even a short favorite here. And then UA1, uh, plus 167 against Maria Sakari. I know it. She just got to the finals at Indian Wells, but Yuan is a steely player with really good numbers, and she should not be plus 167. So those are the plays. Putin Seva, Pari, Schneider, Yuan. Zach Cohen joins us, everybody. VEASAN.com senior writer who writes about every sport under the sun. He joins us now courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. How you doing, Zach? Doing well. We have, we have the same play on one of them. I have uh, Diana Schneider as well. There I like we go. It. Simpatico. Is that a good thing, Zach, when you and I are on the same one? How have we done? Have you documented this when we're on the same one? It it's been happening actually quite a bit. Yesterday I got burned by Kerber as well, um, but I won on volley nets. I had a decent day yesterday. I had Matteo Arnaldi, um, but yeah. So hopefully this one's good. I mean, Keys is just uh, you just said Sam Soto is you know fade material. I think Keys is as well. She's only played two matches since October. Uh, really looked bad in the one win, and then you know the loss to Putinsipa I thought was was really terrible. She just couldn't get the ball over the net. So I do think Schneider, who has won you know 11 of the 16 matches she's played this year comes in with good form, but more importantly comes in, you know, with just more match play. I think that's a really good, you know, really good matchup for her. Yeah, I'm looking at these prices. They're all still in pocket. Schneider is minus 104-ish now. I'd still play it at that number, and I yeah. assume you would as so well, right. Zach. Okay. Definitely. Let's crescendo to college basketball. Do you have anything NBA? I have one NBA pick, although I've been horrible in the NBA lately. I'm talking about firing my translator. Uh, you know, I've got uh, Pelicans minus three against the Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just think this is a matchup between two teams that very good defensively. Both are top five in defensive efficiency, but the Pelicans are you know twelfth in the league in offense. The Magic are twenty fourth. Uh, New Orleans comes into this game after two full days off. They haven't played since Monday. Magic played on Tuesday, so the Pelicans have the rest advantage. And there's just a small advantage for New Orleans in terms of the three point line. New Orleans can shoot the ball, you know, just a little bit better. They're about thirty eight percent this year. They don't take a lot of them, but they do make them when they take them. The Magic can't really shoot. I think that, that the Pelicans are going to exploit that here. Okay. By the way. Uh, and I caught your interpreter uh, comment there. Yes, Kelly. Hardwood handicappers for life. I'm in with you, Zach. Pelicans. <laughs> yes, we Pelican. Oh, you guys match on that. I am back on New Orleans again today. I think it's like the fifth straight game I'm betting them. Uh, this one, you just laid it all out uh, really well, Zach. I'm just going to say, when, on this opening number, it was like one and a half. I know the Magic have been really hot. I've got the Pelicans just rated way, way more than a four point, four or five point difference between these two teams. Zach, you are a match machine. By the way, did you, did you have another tennis play? Did I gloss over that? I have a, I have two other tennis players. Don't okay. worry. I, no, no, please. They're on the website in case people miss them. But I have Harold Mayo to beat Daniel Altmaier. Uh, it's another one where I'm really just fading one of the players. Altmaier has lost six of his last seven matches, lost his only two matches on the Golden Swing. He's a player that we expect things out of on clay. So the fact that he wasn't able to win there kind of says a lot about his form right now. He's a player that I think, you know, kind of could be lacking in the serve. He's not very good from the baseline right now. Mayo is, you know, just a tough player that gets a lot of balls back, has a little bit of aggression when he needs it. And I just think that he's coming into this match playing pretty well. He had to go through qualifiers to get here. I kind of like that because this guy's getting used to the courts. And then I also took Dan Evans' money line. It was about plus 120 against Lorenzo Sonigo, which betting on Dan Evans is a roller coaster. Uh, he's 0-3 against Sonigo <laughs> in his career. But I think that Evans, who has been struggling this year, his real issue has been his serve. Sonigo's break percentage is at like 10% this year, which is you know, horrible. So I think that Evans is going to get back on track with his serve. I think that these courts, they can, you know, they can play a little slow. They can play a little windy. It gets windy in South Beach. You know, it's hot, humid, and you know, Evans hits a lot of slice and makes players uncomfortable. Yeah, Dan Evans, when he was playing in D.C. last year, was the greatest tennis player yeah. alive for one week. Uh, by the way, uh, what are you saying? It's hot in Miami. Uh, Kazao fainted on the court. They had to stop yeah, the match. Was, yeah. That was against Mayo, too. So yeah. he might not even be in the main draw. That's, that's right. That. And Berrettini almost fainted yesterday in like 76 degrees. That. God. It just pulled up the weather. It's, it's, just not, not, that uh, it's not that bad. But, but, that's yesterday, amazing. I think it got to 90. These, okay. these athletes just fought like fainting on the court. It's, it's hard to watch. All right. Uh, college hoops. Let's get to it. March Madness round of 64. Uh, what do you got today? Maybe you have some for tomorrow as well. 
I have two today. I have Moorhead State plus 12, which I feel like everybody's on. I'm also on another one that everybody's on. But I do think Illinois comes into this, you know, after a Big Ten championship. I think that there's some letdown, you know, material here. I think that they'll probably figure it out and maybe pull it out in the second half. But I do think it's a tough matchup. Moorhead State's a top 10 team in terms of effective field goal percentage defense. You know, they slow the game down really, you know, to, the, I think, a top one of the slowest paces in all of college basketball, I believe, top 20. And Illinois wants to play fast. They want to launch a lot of threes. Moorhead State defends the three-point line really well. So I do think this is a really tough matchup for him. And Moorhead State has a guard in Riley Minix who can score the basketball. Illinois has not played defense. So I think this is a matchup that it could get really dicey. I think the defining line I might be, you know, in a really close game at halftime and probably win a close one. He used the phrase score the basketball. That's a $40 fine. Who do you think started that? Jay Billis? Who started that phrase? Score the basketball. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Numbers game investigation coming up on that. We'll get on it. What's your other one today? Stanford plus eight, and I'd play that down to seven and a half, and I do think I'd sprinkle the money line on that. I just think that the vibes with the Jayhawks are really bad right now. Uh, You know, you lost McCuller. I think that Dickinson said that he's going to play, but it sounded like he's playing because he doesn't want to miss the game. It doesn't sound like he's fully healthy, and that's a Kansas team that really struggled down the stretch, and I think that Stanford is one of the more dangerous mid-major teams in the country. I think that they can really shoot the basketball. They can, you know, get up and down the floor, you know, make them you play kind of a weird game. They play really fast. And I just think this is the worst Kansas team we've seen in a while. And I do think that they're probably going to go out here. You see, Samford was another one that I considered for Survivor today, obviously with Kansas's uh, uh, injuries and McCullers famously being out. I, but it, they haven't, when they, when they played against top level competition, it did not go well for them. So like I yeah. couldn't quite, and when I say did not go well, I mean really did not go well. So, I, uh, I couldn't pull the trigger on that. What about tomorrow? Anything? I have the over in Charleston and Alabama, which I think is going to be one of the most fun games of the tournament. I just think both of those teams play at a lightning fast pace. Both of them shoot a ton of threes. I know we think of Alabama as the team that likes to run and gun. Charleston shoots more threes, you know, as part of their shot diet than any team in the league. And, you know, any team... Uh, in mid-major. So I do think this is a team, the game that's going to be up and down, both teams launching threes. I think even if you do see, you know, five minutes early in the game where it's lower in scoring, just as they get used to the courts, I still think it's going to fly over. And it's a, you know, it's a high number at 172 and a half, but I still like it. Yeah, it was higher. It was 174 at one point, yeah. at least when I saw it. And it is by far the biggest total on the board in the round of 64. Anything else, College Hoops-wise, before we get out of here? 20 seconds, or that, that covers it? No, I mean, I guess I'll, my, I'll put my one hot take out there is I don't think that people are talking uh, high enough about Duke right now. Mm. Uh, I know that the season was a little up and down, but, you know, I like what you do when you talk about, you know, the, the factors that make a championship team. I think Duke is right outside of that. Uh, they're a really good team offensively and defensively, and I kind of think that when you get a team like that, a four seed or so, where no one's talking about them, they're dangerous. And I think that they have one of the most talented backcourts in the country. There's no doubt, no doubt there has been very little buzz on Duke, that's for sure. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. Dr. Bob is next. Next. A numbers game on VSIN, the sports betting network. Get ready to dominate the brackets, turn your picks into profits this tournament with the VEASAN Pro March Mania betting guide. Inside this guide, you'll find expert strategies, insider tips, and in-depth analysis that'll give you the edge you need to outshine the competition from underdog upsets to championship predictions. The VEASAN Pro betting guide will have brackets from hosting experts, NCAA tournament betting trends, and of course, best bets for every round of the tournament. Don't miss out on this game-changing resource. It's not too late. Download the VEASAN Pro March Mania betting guide today at VEASAN.com slash madness. That's V-S-I-N dot com slash madness. It's Gil Alexander. It's Kelly Bidlin live from Bar Canada at the D. Kelly, would you say more people milling about? uh, Because we do this show from 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific daily. More people milling about on the morning of March Madness than any other day of the year. Yes, absolutely. We're filling up quick. Yep. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you can if you can pan that camera at all, but we've got uh, everybody staking their claim. It's like it's like the their land, right? Like yeah, yep. got to grab the table for the day. Oh, that's what's happening. That's what, I think that's what's that's going exactly on because right. we've got like a bunch of bunch of one man one man tables going on right now. Love it, uh, and I love that we have this gentleman on the show. And again, I started the show by saying if you have not submitted your bracket yet, wait. Till we talk to Dr. Bob. His name is Bob Stoll. He goes by Dr. Bob. You can follow him on Twitter at Dr. Bob Sports. That's Dr. Bob Sports. And of course, drbobsports.com. Courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line, Bob joins us now. How you doing, Bob? What's happening? I'm doing all right. Didn't get a lot of sleep on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but um, 
I caught up yesterday a little bit. Let me, let it's me, fun. It's fun work. Yeah, let me just ask you this, if I could. Like, as, as long as you've been doing this, does does a little part of does a little boy come out of you when March Madness begins, or are you such a robot at this point doing what you do with modeling that you don't feel it anymore with this event? I, yeah, I don't. I used to. I mean, I'd, I'd be working during the day on Sunday, selection Sunday, doing my, you know, trying to do my ratings on certain you know, on teams as I go along. And then the selection show would come on, and I'd flip it over, and I'd be looking at the selection show and getting all fired up about matchups. And a couple of years ago, I just kind of stopped doing that. I'm like, well, that's, that sort of distracts me from doing the work I need to do. So today, this year, I actually got done a day earlier because I didn't watch any TV. You know, I didn't watch any brackets or selection shows or – for bracket analysis. I didn't watch anything on TV, and I was able to get my work done a day earlier than normal. So I got my brackets out to then my simulation out on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. So that helped a lot of, a lot of people. So, right. no, not as excited as I used to be. Okay. Well, that said, before we get to the bracket talk macro wise, let's, uh, let's how, how about we talk about a play today? What do you like today that's still available? Uh, you know, Kansas is minus seven now. <clears throat> Kevin McCullough's out. Uh, for Kansas, second best player on Kansas. Dickinson might not be 100%, but I think he'll he'll be fairly close to it for, for the Jayhawks. They're going up against a Samford team that likes to run and, and tempo, and, and that's fine. That run and gun style that Samford uses, they're one of the fastest teams in the nation. It works great when they're playing the weaker teams from the Southern Conference, but they face two teams from th- that were better than them this year. And they lost by 53 points to Purdue and by 10 points at VCU. And VCU is not nearly as good as Kansas. Um, so th- that fast pace tends to work against teams when they're playing better teams. I think Kansas is going to love to get up and down the floor. They, they're faster than normal team anyway. And I think they'll be really focused with McCuller out. I think that, I think that the team is more likely to say, hey, one of our best players that we really got to buckle down. And so they're more likely to be focused against a lower-seeded team than they might otherwise. Also, Bill Self's team coming off a loss tends to be really good historically. Since he's been at Kansas, they're 53-27-3 and three as a favorite off a loss against the spread. 53-27-3 and three against the spread. Kansas favored off a loss, including 6-1 and one in the NCAA tournament. So I think Kansas is going to be really focused. McCuller is worth a couple points, and I put that in my ratings, but I still favor uh, the Jayhawks by 9.8 points here with the fast pace included in that projection. So I think it's a good bet at up to minus 8. Yeah, and I was just talking about this with Samford and their performance against better teams uh, on the other side of the break just before you, and uh, that is part of the reason why I could not take them in Survivor. I just thought it was too trendy, and, and you have uh, corroborated that nicely. Uh, all right, let's talk about the brackets in general. So let's couch this by saying that the folks that are in, that still haven't submitted and are in these big pools, now this doesn't apply to like the guys who are doing it with, uh, you know, their nine friends, but the, if you're in bigger pools, 100,000, however many entries are in there, uh, the incentive, the bigger the pool, the more risky you want to get with some of your plays, the more upset-minded you want to get. You've got to be diverse, in other words. You've got dis- you to differentiate yourself from the pack. And so, yeah, yeah go, ahead, go ahead, Bob, you take it from there. No, you go. No, I was going to say, I mean, I, what, yeah, basically what you want to do is inject some variance with value. So you want to inject some, some teams that are maybe off the radar or, you know, upset picks to get to the final four or something like that, but that have value versus what everyone else might be picking. UConn is easily the best team in the tournament. They are better than they were last year because now they got everybody healthy. When everybody's playing, and they had a lot of injuries during the season, and when everybody's playing, they are really, really good. Normally, you do not find value with really high speed. This year, comparing my simulation to the national uh, pools, you know, who's picking who, et cetera, I'm finding value on Connecticut a little bit. Now, I mean, the 30% of the people are picking Connecticut to win, and I have them at 34%. Normally, the higher seeds are like negative 5 or 10% below what the public's picking them, and you, you, you kind of need to steer clear. Um, but Houston also has a little bit of, I think pe- people, you know, with Houston going out earlier than people thought in recent years, I think they've got a little bit of a stigma and people are kind of avoiding them, but I give Houston about an 18% chance to, to win it all. And they're being picked around 12 to 13% by the public. So Houston could be a good alternative to Connecticut, but if you're going to take Connecticut, you need to inject some value somewhere else. Um, teams like Arizona, 
Tennessee, Baylor, legitimate chances to make the Final Four. So you could put some of those in there. But the one that I think has the, the, the biggest value to make the Final Four is St. Mary's. Uh, I give them a 13.8% chance to make the Final Four. The public is only picking the Gale 2.5% to make the Final Four. So if you're in a huge pool, and you can have Connecticut going to your Final Four, but if you want to avoid the masses and want to take someone else, or you can take Connecticut, fine, I would. I did in my pool, but it took St. Mary's to make the Final Four as something to differentiate yourself from the 30% of the people that are taking Connecticut. So you have to think about stuff like that. And if you really want to avoid Connecticut, then Auburn, who they probably face in uh, the Sweet 16, would be a legitimate pick because Auburn is a legitimately good team. The problem is they're facing Connecticut. But if they beat Connecticut, they've got a, a good road to the Final Four and could easily win it. So if you really want to go rogue and be amongst very few having Auburn to win it all, that could be something you want to do in a huge pool uh, to give yourself a, you know, kind of a clear lane. If they happen to get by Connecticut, dogs, it's not unreasonable. And once they do that, Auburn really has the makeup of a team that could that could win it all if they can get by Connecticut. So there's some things to think about. I, I hope if you have, again, if you're one of the uh, those who have not submitted their bracket, there's a bunch. You still have an hour and a half to go here before tip-off of March Madness. Um, that that is really something you inject into your pool if you're in a, in a large one. Uh, let's split the difference. Last thing here, Bob, because you mentioned um, championship. You mentioned Final Four with St. Mary's. You mentioned Sweet 16. Um with Auburn as well getting to the Elite Eight, is there any other teams in there um, beyond the ones you just mentioned that might be a differentiator for folks? Yeah, first of all, for, for the Elite Eight, there's certain teams you avoid. The biggest negative value teams, according to my simulation, would be North Carolina, Kentucky, and Iowa State. Now, Iowa State mostly because, you know, they're, I don't know, I just, I, I, funny, I thought Iowa State would be one of the top five or six teams in my rankings, and they ended up like eighth or ninth. So it really surprised me when I, when I dialed it in. But North Carolina, Kentucky, and Iowa State, have the most negative value to make the elite eight. Negative. Are reasonable. And, l and let's define that negative again. Real value, meaning, negative value, meaning, go ahead. Yeah. Well, for instance, like, um, you know, North Carolina, for instance, to make the elite eight, I give them a 35% chance. That's great. But 71% of the public yeah. are picking North Carolina to make the elite eight. That's negative 36% value. Huge. Kentucky, I give them 23% chance, and the public's picking them at 47%. So a huge difference. So if you want to you know, stay away from teams that the public is picking more than they're worthy, uh, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Iowa State are the three most for the elite eight uh, section. And teams that you could sneak in there that have positive value to make the elite eight or teams like TCU, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Marquette. Now, Cole is no, assuming going to play and be healthy for Marquette. So those are teams that, that have positive value to make the Elite Eight. TCU, um, so, your, your yeah. audio cut out there, so let me just repeat it. TCU, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and Marquette, those are the four? Yeah, Wisconsin and Marquette were the four that had value for the Elite Eight, to make the Elite Eight. Okay. Bob, beautiful. Anything tomorrow you wanted to share with us real quick that you might have a play on? Before we go, 30 uh, seconds. No, I'm still, I'm still working on some stuff for tomorrow. So if you want to have me back on again, perhaps I can uh, oh. throw one out tomorrow. Well, why don't we do that? By the way, then we'll, we'll close with this. Do you play brackets? Do you play Survivor? What do you do personally, Bob? Anything? Yeah, I do brackets. I've, I've, uh, it's not a huge pool. Um, friends pool for, you know, maybe there's three, 200, 300 people <laughs> or something like that. I've won it a couple times. Um, so uh, yeah, I just it's just for trash talk and stuff. I'm not in a, a huge major pool anywhere. All right. I like it. I like Bob's like 200, 300 people. I won it a couple times. No big deal. That's Bob. Bob, let's have you back on tomorrow. Really appreciate it, man. All right, buddy. The great Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob Sports, drbobsports.com, at drbobsports on Twitter, courtesy, again, of the Progressive Guest Line. Crack is here. Kelly and I, we're going to do a draft. Are we going to do an NCAA tournament draft? You oh, and me? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to head to head, me and Kelly. That's coming up. Numbers Game Visa, the Sports Betting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, unscripted with the crack man, Bill Krakenberger. What's happening? How you guys doing? All right, doing very well. Boy, it's in the air. It is. Look oh, at this. Man. Look at this crowd. Look at this crowd here. We never have a crowd this early. They're getting this early their this getting their seats this early. I was just over at Circa. I did the uh, walk from there, and uh, it's just like the calm before the storm. Nobody was really in there. 
When so. Bill when Bill Krakenberger walks from Circa yeah. to the D, how many times do you get stopped? Um, I, I think I stopped once. Once? How'd you know that? On Fremont? Yeah. Right to, right I mean, we saw we saw you shaking hands and, and oh. kissing babies kissing here before, babies. Uh, before yeah. we pressing the flesh. Yeah, Fremont. So a, a guy um, walked out right at the door of the Four Queens. I don't know, like, and he's like, what, wait. He goes, where are you going? I said, well, hi, how are you? <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Look, at, I mean, nobody's there. No. Uh, yeah. It is oh, a little. It's a little wild at this time. Oh yeah. Everybody. This is. This feels great to be alive. It this does. is what it's all about. This is the greatest thing ever. Will and I were talking about this uh, the other day. It's like no matter how Will was saying, and I, it wasn't just me. Uh, no matter how old we get, right? So we're all we're all betters. And we tend to, as we get older, even if we weren't betters, right? The older you get, you tend to get more jaded, right? Your, your childhood love for teams um, tends to dissipate over time for any number of reasons. But there is something about March Madness, right? Selection Sunday to this morning, the, the brackets, Survivor, whatever you're playing, I don't think you ever outgrow this. No, this is... Uh you know, I, I used to call out with my buddies every year back in the 90s, you know, from, from back east. And you come out Wednesday, you you know, you think you know. By the, by the way, it was like early 90s. Uh, you think you know what you're doing. You got your own teams. and um, you, But you want to stay at a place, too. Like, I was thinking to myself, we used to go to Bally's for some reason. Because it was, well, not for some reason. It was the famous Four Corners. There was more yeah. sports books there. You had the Bally's sports book. You, of course, had Bellagio. You had Caesars. You had um, the Barbary Coast, but behind the Barbary Coast, there was another sports book there too. Maybe the Maxim had their own. They had a book at the Maxim, but there was a Bourbon Street. There was a place called Bourbon Street. So I have six line sets you can look at in a matter of you know 30 minutes, 35 minutes to get around. And uh, the corner of the Strip in Paradise. That corner. Yeah. Uh, no, it was actually oh, that no, corner in the Strip. Uh, and the strip and, and, and the flamingo in that corner. Flamingo, not BA. Yeah. Flamingo. And that particular corner right there was, uh, I, I thought it was that you can reach the most books within the shortest amount yeah. of time. Yeah. And it's amazing the differences. This is before the internet. Amazing the differences you would find. Um, but I was, think I was saying it to someone else. Or I was talking about when, you know, we used to come out that time of the year. We used to, like right now, we used to always go to the pool. It was like 10 degrees warmer. Yeah. So I don't know. Something happened well, well, the last decade. You and I, we talked about this last, <laughs> last week. week. I yeah. brought it up. But we do get, like if you're in town, that we do get too nice for those who are at the pool. They get nice days today and tomorrow. Then it goes back to being sucky yes. on Saturday. No, no. It's going to be like yeah. 75 today, right? Yeah, yeah, today's nice for them. But, yeah. you know, that's for those who uh, have come into town. And so they, they do get lucky in that regard. Uh, I do have this breaking news report. Are you ready for this from some uh, Steve Fezzik? Oh, yeah. Noted bridge jumper Stephen Fezzik. The only back-to-back -back winner of the Hilton Super Contest. What's that rascal up to? Uh, <laughs> famously, of course, had Purdue last year against Fairleigh Dickinson. Um, and, you know, look, we love Steve, but he feels the need to make all this public. And so here we are again. He, so he lost on that. This just in. Breaking news. Fairleigh Dickinson won as a 16 seed last year, famously, and people went after him. Um, what did he lay? Minus 4,500, I think, last Something year like on that, Purdue. Yeah. I believe that was not. Then just a week or two ago, remember, he had Villanova against DePaul, and he needed a three. Three and 29, DePaul. Got home easy, Kel. Got what are you easy. talking about? Never in doubt. Well, Steve is announcing that he is playing the money line on all four number one seeds, <laughs> respectively. Huh. Now, I don't know his exact numbers, yeah. uh, so I don't want to quote any right now. Um but he is, he is on North Carolina, Purdue, Houston, and UConn the next two days. And again, mathematically speaking, right? Let's just because Fez was on earlier this week, um, and he was a joy to have on the show. And we talked briefly about this for those again who are new or newish to betting. Um, mathematically speaking, by his numbers, right? It's a ninety-nine point whatever chance of those teams winning. On the money line, again, this is not about spreads. He's betting on the money line. He's laying a cartoonish number on it. Um, but value is value. And to someone like him who does th things through a mathematical lens, if it is perceived as plus EV, which it is to him, um, then, based on the number he's getting, that's why I don't want to quote, because if I quote something that I'm saying, it doesn't mean that that's what Steve got. And he was very clear of saying, hey, if I'm if I'm going minus 4,500 on something, don't you go minus 7,000 on it, right, or whatever uh, the difference is. So he is getting the best that he can, and then he is doing it now. It's not for everyone, though, as he said, 
please, you know, bet $5 on it, whatever you want to do, it's fine. But uh, that's what he's doing. So he will be on all four oh, number ones. He's emptying my accounts here. Yes. Like, like, like he's asking me to bet for him because yeah. this is, you know, like, like there. There you go. Yeah. There you go, Gil. It's a live bet for you. That's um, right. There it is. Yeah. And that, so, what, what, let me see. Well, that, that, he doesn't know it yet, but it's 30, okay. $34,125 to win 750 bucks. <laughs> So there, there it is. The bet has been Steve made, eight. and uh, I just made it right in front of you. That was, that was Purdue, by the yeah, way. Yeah, Purdue. We don't have to say where, but I mean, uh, oh, uh, it's great. it's. Uh, you hear Seth Davis last night. He's like, I don't know. Grambling's got the goods to be Purdue. <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You got, say it got, could be dicey. Well, that's two hundred thousand pending on three games, Steve. Thanks. This yeah. is uh, <laughs> so for Steve. That's his. That's yeah. his uh, angle on it. Now, yeah. my only thing with him, and as I said it to him when he was here, because he's like, he's like, oh, your head's exploding. Oh, my head's not exploding. I get why you're doing it. I just don't want know why you feel the need to make it in public all the time. I would kind of agree with that. Yeah, yeah I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, but then again, you know, I know it's mathematically yes. right to do. Yeah. But I'm not gonna open myself up. I, I don't want to deal with anybody going nuts. And you want to know something? You guys both know this, right? Most people are rooting against them. Oh, well, of course. You, 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 oh, you yeah, guys. Yeah, of course. Oh, we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. this the oh, other okay. day. Yeah. They're yeah. rooting against them. Because uh, I will tell you, during the DePaul Villanova game, as DePaul, <laughs> as, the, as it was going down the wire, I everyone was just rooting against him. And all I did was I was just shaking my head. I was like, oh, please don't lose. I mean, we talked about the please next day. How, how many people texted you during that? Oh, I, I probably had four, diff, four, five, six different texts. That's the one thing I will say. He completely... Uh, took the attention of all of gambling Twitter with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Everybody was rooting against him. If, really if I'm did. being honest, I, I mean, I want I want him to win every single one of Me those too. bets. I kind of hope it's in Philadelphia style, though, so I get like a miniature yeah. oh. sweat on my side. <laughs> 100%. Just to let's let him feel it a little bit and then have him win. I got to be honest. You know, I, I actually did. I'm, I'm, I, I bet that for him. And uh, yeah. I was one of the best. He might have had more, but yeah. I, I didn't know that. I, I wasn't watching the game at all. Someone said to me, do you believe this upset happened? They didn't even know I bet it. And I was like, what? What upset? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. I turned it on. It was like it was literally 57, 55 or something like that. It was oh. whatever it was. It was two points. And then they had to make the three with 13 Villano seconds. Villanova hit a three with, with whatever, 15 you know, seconds? Like whatever. nine seconds, oh, nine whatever seconds, it was. Yeah. I don't know, but don't hold me to that. But yeah. with seconds left in the game, and then the final possession, DePaul, just they didn't even get past half court. You're kidding they, me. They, with they that got much the ball stolen. Left? Yeah. Oh. Wow. It got stolen. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he just he and he. By the way, if you're wondering if I'm speaking out of school, no. Steve authorized that I could say it to the world. That that's a win's a win. I listen. I just yeah. told people. So yeah. A win. A win is a win, and uh, is a win. The, so the, the part that's interesting about what you said though is that everyone was rooting against. Everyone's rooting against. And them. that we've said so many times is the. <laughs> listen, I've said it to Steve too. In his case, does he bring part of it onto himself? He does. He even, you know, he he'd even <laughs> if he's here, he admits that he does. And I always say to him, I go, Steve, why are you? You're a nice person in in, in private. Why do you got to be this brash guy in general on Twitter? He goes, I know you're right. I know you're right. And then the second I turn the corner, he's at back to doing it again. Like he's like a you know a child that can't, can't help, help himself. himself. So he does bring some of it on himself. But generally speaking, like I don't get the whole thing where betters are rooting against each other. I don't get it at all. It doesn't make any sense. Not right. I don't know what it is in the DNA of betters where like because they want to be right about future outcomes, they got to disparage the guy next. So it's not enough for them yeah. to be right. They got to say I'm right and you're wrong. It's really hard to bet where, where 50,000 will will you know hurt me mentally physically emotionally financially yeah but to make a thousand doesn't really a thousand's a good dinner <laughs> like 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 so i can't right I, I i i almost can't justify it but i understand why he does it that's all it, it's yeah. wild though like i'm yeah. looking at the board right now like i'm just gonna use uconn as an example like 26 to 26 and a half point favorite in that game against stetson money line wise I see any range from minus 7,500 to minus 20,000. Right. That's why I'm not saying a number because yeah. I don't know what he got it at. But so. that's a massive difference, obviously. Yeah, not, it, it seems much bigger than it is when you get to those numbers, but it, it's still a difference for sure. Um, all right, we'll come back. Uh, Levitar, Dan Levitar next on GK Network. We're coming back. We'll do a uh, March Madness draft. Bill, you want to join us? Say sure. yes. Sure. That's next. <laughs> 